they can place their logo on the pizza, and also they can play, place a, a discount and uh, have immediate sales. So in order to easier explain you the development of my process, uh, I stole something from our mentor Jason. So I think all of you remember the, uh, the story about Peter and Jun. So from the one that were not here on the presentation, Peter and Jun are trying to find the best cake for their way. So the first su suggestion that Jun gave to Pitt was this cake that, that was looking like the grandma's curtains. So, so next step, they did the small muffins which had the better taste. Here, this is my proto prototype of the pizza bus where my imaginary clients were Google and Coca-Cola. <laughs> so, next thing, this is the real design and there is their cake. So they liked the taste but didn't, they didn't like the color. And I was satisfied with my design, but there was like, a, I need something more. So I included one more catchy de detail here. And uh, in order to be more eye-catchy and my clients would be more effective. So next thing that they did, they had the perfect cake. But, uh, but Pitt uh, wanted to have the World Cup on the, on the, on the <laughs> cake. And I included one more thing. Here, this is like share love part where you can express like love through the city. So the first one is for my mom. And uh, uh, after that, people can send their messages and they will be like everywhere in the city. So next thing, this is like from the beginning, beginning to, till the end. So after that, it's a start, start of business. We have to identify, we have to provide like benefit for, for people. My startup business is offering benefit for four parties involved. So it's a four-win situation. The first part is the pizzeria. I'm cutting their costs and also I'm increasing their sales because now they are offering discount with the pizza. Uh, next thing is their clients. Now they have a new affordable way how they can promote their brands and it's more effective. Third party is the target that's ordering pizza for the same price that they have bought the pizza before. Now they are, they are having a lot of discounts in the city. And the final part in board, it's me and my team because we're going to make some money out of it. So, when we're talking about the money, the break-even point, four clients per month, uh, for, uh, four clients per three months, sorry, I, I have missed that point. So it's uh, the, uh, for the cost about the pizza boxes and also salary per two people, me and Ivana, 300 euros per month. So, if we fulfill the whole box, the profit for one month with agreement with one pizzeria can be 2,150 euros. And uh, here, these people, this, uh, on this academy, we're talking a lot about the passion. So, uh, I'm a startup business and I don't have a lot of money, but with my passion, uh, I'm doing it. A lot of people are hel helping me without money. So, here is also my brand, the dot, that's helping me on an emotional way when there are no clients. He's the one that's helping me. And I just wanted to mention them as a final step. And one thing that I want to say to the whole entrepreneurs here is that it, it only takes, takes one push to start the great things. <laughs>
web first approach. And what they try to do is move that entire experience into a mobile, which means it's horrendous from a user perspective. There's just too much going on. We are incredibly simple and mobile first. We're also transparent. Um, we allow you to see your order status and perhaps like Uber, if you know Uber, uh, you can track the, the, uh, the progress of the order in the car on the way to you. We're also super, super fast. It's as simple as tap, tap, bam. Tap, tap, bam, and it's on its way. So how big's the market? 58 billion globally, about 3.5 billion in Italy where we're launching, uh, 4.5 billion in the UK, 20 billion in the US. 66% of that is all driven online, all through online ordering, and 55% of that is done through the mobile. Two years ago, mobile was basically 0%, and it's gonna get higher and higher. The mobile first approach is effectively the only approach if you wanna be in business in the year. How do we make money? Uh, we're gonna take 10 to 15% commission on the orders that we take from our platform. Competition, I've mentioned Grubhub, there's plenty of others. Uh, huge incumbents, there's probably a billion dollar player in every single market we would consider launching it, uh, and lots and lots of startups that are raising funds. It's interesting that a lot of the growth strategies of the bigger companies is acquisition driven. Okay, so who's the team? I have an incredible co-founder, Simone. Uh, one of the reasons uh, it's, it's such a great situation to be in is we can build this technology ourselves. In 12 days, we're halfway to finishing an iPhone app, and we have a web version launching this week. Um, I've got experience, I'm a child accountant, I've worked at a venture capital firm in London before I came here, uh, I've got some previous startup experience too. Uh, okay, so how is this team going to execute? First, this week we launched in Trento, we're in an accelerated at the moment, so we have a great support structure and some great marketing partnerships to get that initial traction. Then we'll test the technology and make sure we can do this. Um, we're going to work with people that have a delivery function uh, off the bat. Then we'll start rolling out as fast as we can. Uh, we'll take our earnings and as soon as we feel it's safe, we can start expanding. Whether that's Verona, whether that's Milano, whether that's New York and London, will depend on what we learn in Trento. Um, we're also start looking at perhaps working, uh, we're trying to implement our own delivery fleet so we can work with better restaurants that perhaps don't do that at the moment. That's an intermediate step towards actually opening our own kitchens in the end. So let's stop taking 10 to 15% and let's start taking 40, 50, or 60% when we actually run fit for purpose takeaway kitchens with no plates, no bowls, no wait staff serving people in the front. Let's run an efficient takeaway kitchen. The great thing about that is it allows us to control the entire user experience from that person ordering in a few seconds on their app to the cooking, to the delivery, to the conversation when that person hands over that food and to the packaging of that box. We're doing this all with a vision of, in the end, being able to 3D print food, deliver it to you on a drone 24-7. And we're pretty serious about that. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Hello, everybody. I'm Zimbo Dates, and I'm a representative of my team, Foundry. Uh, actually, we are developing an application, a food application that will help people uh, get to the food they want, the quality they want, and also the restaurant they want. Uh, 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 we started by doing a survey. The survey here had almost 147 people, and the survey, from the survey and from the research, we came up that most of the things people want about uh, restaurant production are deals, offers, and all of these stuff that are on the features. And we start, we wanted to tackle them by the features. So. Uh, first, uh, what is the problem? And we found the problem from the research. And actually, after we found the problem, we found this interesting article done by Dave McClure that in this article, he said that actually menu sucks. So we have to come with something. We have to come with a technological advancement to build on this problem. Uh, the target market is uh, our local market, Kosovo, with 43.3% uh, uh, of the population having smartphones on their hand. So, we are developing database apps. It's easy to download. You just go to the App Store, uh, Android, and Apple, and you take, you take the app, download it, and then you can search on it. Okay, I will go fast with the features. Uh, features is Pristina Restaurant Promotion. We'll start with it. It's the feature that you can see the deals and that offers also the discounts done by people, done by restaurants actually. Then is uh, Pristina restaurant menu. You can find photos of the food, you can click on the photo, find the ingredients of the food and the price. And also you can search based on three variables, is the food, the nearby location and the restaurant itself. 
Uh, then is uh, uh, rate Pristina restaurants. You can rate in here food quality, uh, location, and also the price. Other than that is check-in restaurants. This is going to be after three months on the application, and here you can check in based on, on Instagram, Facebook, and Foursquare. And then is when we want to develop like expanding all Kosovo, we are planning to put administrative regions in the application. And e-parking, you can find out information about parking, private ones, public ones, and also all other parkings in the area. And um, one of the last ones that I want to give an important is this, uh, the technologist, food technologist, food inspectors training the food. Our these are the features. I will go on with my interesting triangle. Uh, we are planning to uh, give a map. We are planning to manually input data for the first hundred restaurants because they are our test market. Then we are planning to put to give CMS accounts to the restaurants for later development and updates on the program. Then is our marketing, or as I said before, our target market is Kosovo, and we are offering 10 euro for every restaurant. Actually, we are planning to promote it, social media and uh, all of uh, TV advertising, PR codes, etc. And our uh, uh, our actual uh, our actual competitors are Pishquiar and uh, Foursquare, and these competitors, one of them is international, one is national, and they are before us in the market. They are functional, but we are more user friendly and more tackling the local market. Uh, our investment is 12,000, and actually we got the investor is Vlasdim Gia, an important entrepreneur from Switzerland. He planned to invest 12,000 in our company. We have signed a contract, and it's done, and it's a thing that it's finished right now. And you can go on the development. We are planning to develop on different areas, different hemispheres, and also planning to develop new apps that will help us better in the future. We are selling time, so let's take more time. And the last thing is our management team is me, my great friend and uh, my great uh, group member, Ranu Lai, we've been together for a long time, and Shvaduji. Uh, he is an expert on accounting. I've been doing psychology for a long time, and I will be running the company, and Shvaduji is uh, good in coding and uh, developing applications. Thank you for your time, and thank you from the jury for helping us a lot develop this one. Free drink. Okay, just watch. So, <clears throat> I represent you Free Drink. It's a social platform. And let's talk about Free Drink, okay? On the right side, you can see smartphone users. I must tell you that over 1 billion smart smartphones are in this world right now, right? And on the left side, you can see bars, men's, brands, by brands I mean beverage manufacturers and radio stations. We wanted to connect them with each other. How we did it? We created a mobile app that's called Free Drink, and as you can see, here's the mobile app. Actually, you can download it right now. It's available for Android devices, and iOS devices soon will going to be uh, it soon will make a Windows Phone application too. So application is totally free for end end customer. It's available right now. You can download it. Please go ahead download it. And uh, you can find your offers. You can drink for free with our app. How? So how do you do it? You download our app. Keep track of offers. Get your free drink. Get your free drink voucher, of course. Go to the menu where it is, show the voucher to the bartender and take your free drink, okay? So, second part of our customers are bars. Okay, so this is a, this is a mock-up screen of our web application for bars and uh, they have uh, marketing tools we, and we're gonna charge them then. So we're going to take my uh, small amounts of money from them and uh, we're going on mass, right? Next, next type of customers are events. By events I mean festivals and big concerts. Not small events like birthday parties, right? And events are going to be charged, of, of course. They have to pay a little bit more than bars 
and they will pay. Actually, we have we had the demo yesterday and two days ago. We sent over 300 beers for free. Question? Okay, no questions. You can contact me or you can check our website and check our Facebook Facebook page. Take care. Thank you very much. Hello, um, my name is Alessandro. I come from Serbia. And before I continue, let us watch a short. <coughs> Um, this is the user interface of the Help Me app. It's previously pretty, pretty cool and it's unapologetically beautiful. Um, it's, it has only one button. It says Help Me. Um, before, before you do anything, you need to connect your Help Me app with your Facebook account, your Twitter account, or your Google Plus, Plus account. Um, and pre default message would say, Help Me, I'm in danger, please call the police. Or if you're using Serbian, Croatian, or any other language, uh, it will be in that language also. Uh, the message will go to your Facebook account and will look something like this. Your current location, uh, using your GPS chip in your smartphone, will go to the Facebook account and your friends will, sh will see that. And if they see that, they can con contact the police and help you uh, with that. After 15 minutes of posting this to Facebook and other uh, social networking sites, the message will delete itself. Um, what about target market? The target market will be the world. Why? Because, um, see on this chart, you can see the top 10 countries with ad revenue. The ad revenue itself is huge. It's worth on, uh, around $10 billion. And uh, these are the countries, top 10 countries, and I'm targeting eight of these because this is the, eight of these countries are countries with the highest crime rates in the world. The budget, I need only $8,500. Why? Because you can see it's uh, divided uh, for developers, designers, marketing, etc. Um, now the interesting part. The app itself will be free. I'm using the premium model and uh, I'm offering in-app purchase. The in-app purchase will cost $4.99. Why? Uh, because I am targeting service. And with that in-app purchase, you're getting a huge database uh, of all the data, all the police and cops numbers of the world. So let's say you, you go to Serbia, you have no idea what's the uh, police number, right? And you have my app, and the app has the police number in Serbia. You just tap the button, and the app will call the police for you. Um, help me out is the app that you would love to have or wouldn't like to use. Thank you. Oh. So, hello everybody. My name is uh, Mr. Mesek and my colleague name is Anja Kalchitz and today I'm going to present to you Capture. Now I'm going to begin with the story. So, a few months ago I was out. It was a Saturday night, 3.30, and I decided to go home and it was pouring rain. So, of course, I call a cab. And they told me they'll, they'll be there in five minutes. But in Zagreb, cap on Saturday night, five minutes is never five minutes. It's about 20 minutes wait. So after 20 minutes, on a pouring rain, I decided to go with the bus. Because maybe he'll, he'll come. And I just missed him. I went back to the cab and I just missed my cab. So I walked home for 20 minutes on pouring rain. CapShare is the solution. Now, to define it in one sentence, CapShare is an application for gathering people that are going in the same or similar direction with the purpose of lowering transportation costs and uh, the time you need to get a cab. Now, we are planning to make it on Android and iOS system, so a lot of people can use it. And this is how it basically should look like. You enter a starting point where you want to, where you are or where you want to be picked up where you are going and at what time. Then you are matched with people with the similar same direction and you have a capture. Now, the story with the capture would be a bit different. So I would, in the plot, I would just uh, type where I want to go, where I am. I wouldn't have to wait outside in the rain. I would get grouped with people. I would wait for the cab shorter. And I would get home quicker, safer, and I would pay less. 
Now, customers that primarily we target are people like the most people in the back of the room. <laughs> 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 young adults, young adult students from 18 to 25 because they don't have a lot of money and they try to save and they don't have their car. Now, we tend to have partners. Uh, so, example would be Zara. You have two uh, major taxi companies, Camel and Eco Taxi, and they fight for market share. So we would make uh, one of them primary and second one secondary partner with the purpose that if somebody sends a request, the primary will get it first and secondary, if the primary can't handle the order. And it, the difference would be the fees. So the first partner would uh, ha have to pay us bigger fees. Now, revenue model. We have three stages of the revenue model. First would be that the customers need to figure out on their own how much they pay. We just connect them. Second would be premium pricing. Now, this is an interesting concept because we want to encourage taxi drivers to use this. And it would function like this. If a cab uh, costs $30 and there are three people, each of them should pay 10, right? But with premium pricing, uh, each of them would pay 15, so the cab fare would be $45, so the taxi company gets some more extra money, but the user also gets the half of the price. Now, the third is mobile payment. After development, everything goes well. Uh, we would implement a system that you can pay with your phone and the, it will be equally divided among all users, so nobody, it's, so it's not unfair. <coughs> now, the competition. Well, in Croatia and some local countries, we didn't uh, found any competitor, really, but one of the uh, competitors that everybody mentioned was Uber. Now, that's in America, and they function similarly because uh, they, uh, you can uh, have a shared cab, shared ride, but they, uh, go into the, uh, they go into the market of the cab drivers, and they're not really happy, and they have a lot of problems in the U.S. with that. And we simply want to connect the supply with the demand, so only the uh, cab companies that already exist. And the execution plan, well, fairly simple. Negotiate first, negotiate the taxi companies, develop the app, test the app, then release the app, test it even more, monitor and improve everything, and then expand. So when we see, for instance, Zagreb fun uh, functions well, we would go to Slovenia, Serbia, and other related countries. And to conclude, what you need to remember that cab share is a quicker, safer, and less expensive or cheaper cab ride for everyone. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Karlo from Q1 Customs. We are making personalized children's bicycles. Let me tell you why. A few months ago I was in the process of acquiring a bike for my daughter and after a few weeks of research what I noticed was the following. Based on that and the fact that, uh, that there's an ever-growing trend of an individual approach to each and every customer, we decided to implement an entirely new concept. So what we are doing is basically sort of like Nike is doing with shoes. You can buy a pre-designed model or customize, customize your own online. We are basing that on our idea model. And as you go through our website, through our web service, where you design your bike, uh, you can get up to a billion different combinations. Each time, you will get a cool, funky, trendy, and a unique bicycle. Uh, after they receive their bike, they will be more responsible towards it, they will be more motivated to use it, and show it off to their friends. Our market is the EU market. Kids 3 to 12 make 10% of the entire EU population. Therefore, we have 50 million potential customers. But it's not as simple as you might think. We firstly need to test the market locally, therefore we're going to organize online creative concept, content in order to increase our database of potential customers. After that, uh, the winners will receive test models, give us their reviews and testimonials. We will use the results of that to uh, organize a Kickstarter campaign. We will increase brand visibility. Uh, to further marketing and acquire uh, the first 100 customers. To implement this business model, we will need initial costs of about 25,000 euro. The trickiest part will be uh, the implementation and logistics around the frame production and manufacturing. 
We will cover that through our own personal savings. Uh, we have support from some of our friends. None of them are fool, foolish enough to invest, but there are some family members that might be foolish enough. Most of the expenses will be covered through our Kickstarter campaign. It's about children's happiness. We want to put a smile on every child's face, but why not make them feel about fool when they're doing it 